Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm going to talk all about um, the, uh, the consequences of abrupt climate change on the biosphere of our planet, and that includes humans, of course. There's a new paper that has come out recently, and it's called Underestimating the Challenges of Avoiding a Ghastly Future. You know, quite a title for a scientific paper. There, there's a, a quote in there. Um, I think they may have quoted me from about 10 years ago, actually. The earth is losing the ability to support complex life. Okay, we're seeing an ominous erosion of our planet's life support systems across the board. And the mainstream media and uh, people in power, politicians, they're really having a difficult time to grasp this reality. You know, they don't want to, it's very dire. And in order to acknowledge it, you have to actually do something about it. If you do acknowledge it and see how terrible it is, then there, there's no other option but to take action against it. The human enterprise, our inexorable expansion, has really severely degraded all of our ecosystems on this planet. There's a huge reticence of scientists still to come clean and tell people exactly how bad things are. And, you know, you can see a lot of that, I think, in some of the stuff that, that uh, you know, new books that are being introduced by both Michael Mann and Bill Gates. I have those books. I'll read them very soon. Um, you know, they might be, you know, it's good there's getting a lot more awareness in the public and among the scientific community and among politicians of the dire straits that we're in. But, you know, the challenges to avoid a ghastly future are huge, are enormous. Part of the problem of the scientific community and the university system and the way science is done is there's way too much specialization within the disciplines. And that really blinds people. It, it insulates people from the big picture. You know, there's a real lack of systems thinking, joining the dots on all the parts of climate change. And also there's a widespread ignorance of human behavior. You know, one of the big factors is the biodiversity decline. Okay, we're seeing rapid loss of species, the numbers of species, and also the populations of individual species across the planet. Some facts, hard, hard cold facts. Since the start of agriculture 11,000 years ago, okay, after the ice left the northern hemisphere, the retreat of the ice from the last ice age, since then, the biomass of vegetation on land, so if you take the mass of all the vegetation on land and add it up, that biomass is decreased by about half. We've lost about half. We've lost um, over 20% of the original biodiversity that we had back then. 70% of the Earth's land surface has been altered by people. That's the number that's quoted in the paper, but you know that seems on the low side to me. We've had over 700 vertebrate and 600 plant extinctions in the last five year, uh, 500 years. The population of vertebrates is declined by over two-thirds in 50 years. There's one million species, and that's out of a total of about somewhere from seven to 10 million species total that are threatened with near-term extinction. The global biomass of wild mammals has decreased 75%. We're getting massive declines of insects. We have only under 15% of the original wetlands left. We've lost over 75% of the major rivers, uh, major being over a thousand kilometers in length. Um, over three quarters of those rivers uh, dry up before they reach the ocean. Of course, we're getting massive declines in coral and kelp and seagrass. And these are the 
um, the hot spots, the biodiverse spots in the oceans. Um, we've lost 40% of the kelp and the seagrass is declining at a rate of about 10% per, per decade. The, there's 0 0.17 gigatons of living biomass um, it, within terrestrial vertebrates, but 59% of that is taken up by livestock today. 36% is taken up by humans so that only leads, leaves 5% of the terrestrial, so land-based vertebrates. Only 5% are the wild mammals, the birds, the reptiles, the amphibians. The rest are its livestock and humans. As of 2020, the overall material output of the human endeavor is greater than the sum of all living biomass on Earth. Okay. We're definitely underway uh, in the sixth mass extinction, where we define a mass extinction as the loss of over 75% of all species in less than 3 million years. So, so we're in the middle of this extinction. Um, there's been five major extinctions previously. The last one was uh, 65, 66 million years ago. The background extinction rate is 0 0.1 extinctions per million species per year. Vertebrates are at least 15 times this rate and have been since the 16th century. We 20% of all species are in danger of extinction over the next few decades. Um, and there's also the concept of ecological overshoot. You know, our population has, human population has doubled since 1970. There's 7.8 billion people on the planet today. By 2050, we could have 10 billion people. And we're obviously heading to massive food insecurity and human consumption exceeds the capacity of the earth by uh, 170%. So, I'm going to talk about the details of this paper on some of these challenges that we it, to that we need to undertake to avoid this ghastly future. I'll also talk about um, so it's not just climate change, but it's climate change plus human activity that is dooming species at an unprecedented rate. There's a plethora of direct and indirect often synergetic mechanisms that are doing uh, this. The primary extinctions, of course, are driven by the environmental changes, but that could just be the tip of an enormous extinction iceberg because there's things called co-extinctions, and these are within the ecological interactions. When you lose one species at the bottom of the food chain, then there's a cascading effect where you can lose additional species as you go up the trophic levels of the, of the uh, food chain. So there's a model, a paper modeled these co-extinctions and looked at all the ecological dependencies and found that the, the amplification of the direct effects of the environmental change on the collapse of uh, planetary diversity is magnified at least by a factor of 10 because with the co-extinctions that are resulting from these biotic interactions. So the anthropogenic drivers, of course, habitat destruction, over-exploitation, biotic invasions, and then combine those with the environmental changes, the temperature rises, the increased droughts, ocean acidification, etc. And, you know, we're passing the tolerance of many, many species, so we're getting many local extinctions. Okay, so, you know, very, very dire stuff, but, uh, you know, it's something that people need to, to understand uh, so that we get uh, proper action. Okay, so let me go to my computer monitor here. It's gone to sleep on me. Here we go. Okay, so this is a paper. Uh, this is open source. It's called Understanding the Challenges of Avoiding a Ghastly Future. 
Um, just to remind you, uh, this is my website, paulbeckwith.net. Con please consider donating on my PayPal to support this independent research that I do. And um, also my YouTube channel, um, you know, Paul is, is Paul Beckwith. Just Google Paul H. Beckwith or Paul Beckwith on YouTube and you can find it. And I've got hundreds and hundreds of videos on all different topics. So just if you want to find out about a specific topic, just do a search and it's going to pop up. Um, of course, uh, you know, my Facebook page um, and Twitter very active on. And I'm starting to do a bit more on Instagram and also some of the other uh, social media uh, platforms, of course, you know, Twitter and Facebook have been staples of mine for a long time. Okay, so this is a paper um, that just came out. It's open access in frontiers uh, in conservation science. So, okay, so they talk about the three major, they report on three major and confronting environmental issues that have received little attention and require urgent action. First, they review the evidence, and I talked about that in my intro, some of the evidence that future environmental conditions will be far more dangerous than currently believed. The scale of the threats to the biosphere and all its life forms, including humanity, is in fact so great that it's difficult to grasp for even well-informed experts. And then they actually ask and look at the you know, what sort of political and economic le system or leadership could handle some of these predicted disasters or even, you know, be capable of, of, of any action against them. And then third, the, the dire situation places an extraordinary responsibility on scientists to speak out candidly and accurately when engaging with government, business, and the public. Okay, um, we especially draw attention to there's a lack of appreciation of the of the enormous challenges that we face to create a sustainable future. And of course, these added stresses to human health, wealth, and well-being will perversely diminish our political capacity to mitigate the erosion of ecosystem services on which society defends. So in other words, you know, the worse things get, the less our ability to actually uh, take action to mitigate these things. So, um, Highly recommend that you, you know, just Google the title and you'll find this paper and you can have a look at it yourself. But I'm going to talk about uh, some of the key things. So, you know, this statement here, humanity is causing a rapid loss of biodiversity and with it Earth's ability to support complex life. They should actually be quoting me from 10 years ago. The mainstream is having difficulty grasping the magnitude of this loss, despite the steady erosion of the fabric of human civilization. Okay, um, while suggested solutions abound, the current scale of their implementation is no, nowhere near matches the relentless progression of biodiversity loss. Okay, so, um, you know, we summarize the state of the natural world in stark form here to clarify the gravity of the human predicament. Okay, um, and the ominous erosion of Earth's life support systems. And, you know, the point is, is our, this is not a call to surrender. The aim here is to provide leaders with a realistic cold shower of the state of the planet that is essential for planning to avoid a ghastly future. Okay, so biodiversity loss is a huge one, okay? And they talk about the start of ag agriculture and how the biomass of terrestrial vegetation has been halved, lost greater than 20% of the original biodiversity, greater than 70% of the Earth's land surface has been altered by humans, 700 vertebrates, 600 plant extinctions over the last 500 years, Many more species have gone extinct and they've been unrecorded clearly. Um, population size of vertebrates down two thirds over the last 50 years. Um, One million species threatened with extinction in the near future out of an estimated seven to 10 million eukaryotic species on the planet. So species, you know, um, that's, that's complex life. Okay, so, um, I'm going to continue this in a second video. Thank you for listening.